Hello everybody and welcome back to the Space Engineers Tutorial Survival Series Episode 4. Um, before we start the video I've made a couple changes, I've added the quieter tool sound mod, so a few people recommended it. As you can now hear, everything is silent. Um, I did that just because I guess it was a bit easier for you guys to watch if you're not constantly being blasted by grinding and welding noises. Um, and secondly, I'm going to restructure the series a little bit um, and focus on one topic per episode so that if people are going through the survival process they can easily flick back to these videos um, if they need to and just reference specific topics. Um, I think it will obviously increase the length of the series and also it will mean that you know it would be easier for people to select different topics that they, they need help with or they're struggling with or skip those that they're not. Um, I'm also going to try and do a bit less cutting as well so you can see what I'm doing um, without the without the cuts. So so this episode we're going to be focusing on creating a solar tracking rotor. Now there are a couple reasons you might want to do this. Um, the reason I'm doing it is because we're on a very flat surface here. The sun goes straight across us in the sky so we've got loads of, um, loads of time in the sun. And also we've got the pod now which is going to be recharging its battery so it's hoovering up a bit more power. Um, we've got more production facilities which are using power and eventually we're going to want a rover and another ship as well. So we're going to need more power production and the solar panel will let us do that. Um, and it's relatively easy to build and you can do it on the moon because if you're on the moon you can't obviously use wind turbines. So I thought I'd show you how to use solar panels as well. Um, I'm going to preface this. Um, if you want to get the most out of solar panels and you don't really want to do a rotor setup or what have you, place them flat on the ground um, and you're going to get most of the sunlight as the sun moves across the sky, depending on where you are obviously. Um, but just placing them flat is, is usually a pretty safe bet. You're going to get most power generation, um, but you will get more if you do a rotor setup. So. The first thing we're going to do is push the rotor setup a little bit further out from the base. The reason we're doing this is because I don't want the refinery to be blocking the sun or anything like that. Um, I'm just going to rearrange the ores here. I just collected some iron, but the nickel takes ages to refine. So if you're trying to make components and you're missing something, you can see what you're missing by the required available section. Um, you might just need to jig around a few of the ores so I've just put the iron to the front it refines a lot quicker um, stone refines the quickest nickel just takes forever <laughs> so hopefully yeah components should be being produced now so I'm just gonna get a few interior plates and steel plates so that I can build out a little setup here to show you how it works so I'm gonna use these interior pillars just because they look a bit like power lines um, you can use whatever you want I'm going to weld these up eventually as well, just so that we've got a bit more stability in what we're doing here. So I'm going to go a good distance away from the base. Um, and then there's a little bit of a dent here. I don't know what that is. Um, and then I'm just going to build a platform for us to start building off here. Oh, scrap. Huh. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do like a little 5x5 five five platform here. Should give us plenty of room and I'll just show you the basic concepts of getting a solar panel rig up and going. So the first thing we want to do is be able to turn the solar rotor horizontally so it can follow the sun. So to do that we're going to use a rotor. We're going to use the default rotor. Um, you've got advanced rotors which allow conveyor networks to move through them. These simple rotors don't. Because we're just building a solar panel setup I'm not too fussed about conveyors going through them or not. So we're just going to use the default rotors because they're cheaper. Um, and yeah, it's just a bit easier. So we're going to place a rotor. Um, and then I'm just going to bring it a little bit off the ground as well. Because the solar panels are, I believe, they're four blocks, four or five blocks in length. Um, and we don't want them to scrape the ground as it's moving. So they're yeah, four blocks tall. As you can see, if we've got it like, like this way around... They're actually quite, well, they're pretty much going to be hitting the ground. So we want to just move it up a little bit. Probably going to go one more block. And then I'm going to add a hinge. And then this is going to control our vertical elevation. You can also do 
um, a sideways rotor so you can do this like that and that will also work but for this setup I'm just gonna go with a hinge um, I think it's probably a bit easier to do down the top we're gonna place a block and maybe a ramp or two oh <laughs> The hinge isn't powered, which is why it did that little drop there. Um, and then we're going to get some solar panels going. We've actually got these new solar panels that we could use as well. I've not really tried them out too much. I don't know how big they are. Yeah, well, why not? I'll give them a go. Doesn't ha doesn't matter how you do this. You can just do like the regular solar panels like um, like that. But for now, I'm going to go with these ones because oh, I think they look kind of cool, actually. Um, and then down the side here, maybe like a passage. And then... You don't have to copy what I'm doing here. This is just visual stuff. Oh, I know, actually. I know. There's actually a block, which is a bit like a U-shape that I'm going to use here. This is DLC. Like that. Something like that. And then on the front, so facing the same direction as the solar panels that you want, like the direction you want the sun to be hitting, you want to put a camera. When you're placing the camera, this little light needs to be in the bottom left for it to be the right way around, like it's shown in the picture. And then that little, I guess, bar should be on the top. Um, and now I'm going to go get all the components we need um, and just get this welded up. And um, quickly, a few people have mentioned it as well. You can go up to the assembler shift middle mouse button. We'll queue up the components, which is the same as pressing this button. Um, and we've nearly got this finished here. So I'll just quickly grab the components out of here um, and finish welding this up. Obviously, same as the wind turbines. I'd recommend getting the, the base welded up as soon as you can. Just in case you hit it with the mining ship, which, uh, yeah, is fairly likely in my case, but, yeah, obviously it depends on your piloting skills. I wouldn't take the chance anyway, though. Um, and then we're going to get the camera as well. And there you go, you now have a solar panel set up. You can see how much um, sunlight is hitting the panels based on these green lights. As you can see, if all of the green lights are lit up, you're getting the optimum amount of output. In this case, we've got a few which actually aren't, um, and I've not got this one built actually, let me just weld this up real quick. Um, we've got a few of them which aren't, so in order to make them as efficient as possible, we want them to be continually pointing directly at the sun. So the way we can do that is, well, number one, make sure you've got a camera, make sure you've got something to turn it horizontally and something to turn it vertically, whether that be a rotor or a hinge in either case. And then we're going to use a block called the turret controller. Now, as implied by the name, this is typically used for custom turrets. However, we can use it as it has a aim at sun function, which we're going to employ here. That is very close. Blimey. Uh, which we're going to use here. So, I'm just going to put the turret controller right here. doesn't matter where it is, as long as it's on the same grid as the solar rotor. Get this built up. And then I'll show you how to configure the rotor so it's always pointing at the sun. Might as well get it fully welded. So if we click on this, go into the control panel, we find the rotor. So I'm going to name this rotor H. And then if we find the hinge, and I'm going to name this hinge V for vertical. And then we find the camera. It's a different colour in the control panel because it's on a separate grid. So once you add a rotor or a hinge or a moving part, this becomes a separate grid. So this is a different grid. And then this is also a different grid to this one. So we've got a grid on top of a grid and a grid. It's a bit confusing, but I promise you eventually it'll settle in. Um, and you can see here, the orange ones are on this second grid, and then these lighter orange ones are on the third grid. So I'm going to go on the camera, and I'm going to give it the solar tag. The reason I've done this is because now if we go into the turret controller, come down here, 
we can assign the rotors and the hinges easily because we can see the name and also the camera. If you've got multiple cameras on your base or whatnot, it can be a little bit tricky to find the right one. So that's why I usually just give them a name. Um, so elevation rotor, um, we're going to put the hinge because that's for elevating up and down. Then azimuth is the horizontal rotor. Assign the camera, the solar camera. And then if we come down and click always aim at sun. This will now spin round and point directly at the sun. Got a little bit of fog coming in here. Uh, I'm just going to paint these blue because I feel like that's the appropriate colour for them. Um, and there you go. You now have a successful solar rotor. And then this is obviously as scalable as you want it to be. Um, this will work on the planet, space or the moon. It's a really good idea to get this going on the moon. As mentioned, you don't have wind turbines, so you're going to be relying on it quite a lot. Um, as well as probably engines on the moon, to be fair. Um, but you can make it as large as you want, add as many solar panels as you need, um, and that will quite happily sit and track the sun for the rest of the playthrough, providing you don't bump into it with a ship or a rover at some point. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe to support the channel. Leave any questions you have in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you. Take care, everybody.